Welcome to the Church of the Holy Family for our celebration of the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The intention for this Mass is for Al Peel and Jerry Peel. Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, number 31, We Gather Together, number 3-1. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask of Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray.
Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call you Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you, along with all malice. 
All be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us, as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except that the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. The story of Elijah the prophet is, is such a fascinating, dramatic, intense story that we find in uh, the first book of Kings. It's one of the finest stories in the whole Bible, uh, amongst many. So here's Elijah, and just to give a little context for, for our first reading, Elijah lived at the time when the people of Israel were no longer really considered to be Jews. They were no longer monotheists. They were pagan. They believed in all these other gods. The temple worship was amok. Uh, their morality was amok. Uh, everything was kind of degraded, including the, the kingdom and the king himself. And here's Elijah, and he's considered to be a Jew. He believes in the Lord God, the, the God of his fathers, the God that the King David set down for Israel, the kingdom of Israel to believe in. And he's the only prophet of the Lord God. All of these other prophets that surround the king at that time were prophets of Baal, which is what they called to whatever god they believed in. And so one day, Elijah, with the Spirit of God, challenges all of these prophets to, uh, well, to a challenge. You make your sacrifice and I'll make mine, but don't burn your offering. If your god is the real god, he'll burn the offering himself and then if my God is the real God, he'll burn the offering itself. Don't, don't burn in the offering like you normally do. So the, the prophets of Baal, confident, you know, 
some 300, 400 in number, as the Bible says. You know, they make their altar, they, their altar, they put the calf on it, and then they start praying to Baal. You know, Baal, hear us, you know, you're the true God, make this, um, make this calf come on fire. And for hours upon hours upon hours, they're dancing, they're doing their ritual, they're shouting louder and louder and getting more and more nervous, maybe, that Baal is not answering them. And so eventually they start adding their own blood to the sacrifice. They start um, slashing themselves, as, as the Bible says. The Bible is not rated G, by the way. Um, so, and it doesn't work. And then finally, Elijah says, that's enough. My turn. So he builds his offer, uh, altar, puts the calf on it, and then says, put water on it. Not once, not twice, but three times. Water was poured, drenching this altar, drenching the calf, drenching the whole area. And, you know, kind of proving the point. You know, you, you imagine that Elijah would be pretty confident in this. So, but then Elijah prays, Lord God, you are the true God. Make your name known. And immediately, fire comes down from heaven, the calf is consumed, the water is consumed, the altar itself is consumed, it's, it, the altar is no longer there, it's destroyed. So Elijah won. And to prove his point and in, in, this, um, in this righteousness, righteousness for the Lord God, he kills all of the prophets of Baal. As you might imagine, the king was not happy about that. So and so the king puts this uh, death warrant on Elijah, and as you might imagine, Elijah runs away. And just imagine, put yourself in, in the place of Elijah. Here he is, he's a prophet of the Lord God. He made his triumphal uh, prophecy that the Lord God be made known. And now it seems like the Lord God deserted him. The Lord God's not protecting him. He has to run for his life. He has to run away. He has to run into the desert. So, and to go to a place where no one will find him, the, the mountain that the Lord appeared upon. Kind of a nice irony there. But so here he is. He's upset, he's distraught, he's fearing for his life. And here's where we come into our first reading. It is enough, O Lord, to take my life, for I am no better than my father's. And then he falls asleep. And at first it's like, well, that's kind of ridiculous. But it makes sense. Have you ever been so angry that you fell asleep? Have you ever been so tired, well, so tired that you fell asleep, but um, have you ever been so uh, sad, so anxious that you fell asleep? That's what's going on here. El Elijah's in this turmoil. He's in this distress. Take my life. And he means it. He means it. He has no food. He has no shelter. He has no bed. He has nothing. And to him, to his heart, he doesn't even have God. That's quite the place to be in. It's quite the place to be in. Take my life, for I am no better than my father. So he falls asleep. Then the angel wakes him up. And there, mysteriously appearing, we don't know where it comes from, but mysteriously appearing is this bread and this water. And the angel, also mysteriously appearing, says, take and eat. And then Elijah falls asleep again. And then the angel wakes him up a second time. Take and eat. Else the journey will be too long for you. What's going on here? This food mystically, mysteriously appears. He eats it the first time and falls asleep. He eats it the second time and has enough energy to go 40 days and 40 nights without more food to the mountain of Horeb. What's going on? What's going on? This food, this bread and drink, this bread and water, is healing him and giving him strength. Right? We know from, from science, from psychology, that when we sleep, the body and the brain heal. That's one of the main importances of sleep, that the body and the brain heal. So here's Elijah falling asleep the first time, having had this, this, um, this food, this hearth cake and this jug of water. It's healing him. 
It's healing him of not having any food, of being physically exhausted, mentally exhausted, and then also spiritually under duress. His God has left him. What's going to happen to him? He's fearing for his life. It's healing him. And then the second time, he takes it and it gives him strength to do what he needs to do. 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, the mountain of Horeb. Maybe some of you have beaten me to the grand revelation, the New Testament. This, this hearth cake and this jug of water, they foreshadow the Eucharist. They're not the Eucharist. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. They foreshadow the Eucharist. The Eucharist also heals and gives us strength. The Eucharist is also a source of healing for our hearts, healing for our souls, and for strength for our souls to continue on to do what we need to do. So as it happened to Elijah, it also happens to us. And like Elijah first needed healing before being sent out, before giving the strength, so it's that way is with us too. And of course, there's, you know, it's life. There's a fluctuation. There's ups and downs. There's times when we need more healings. There's times when we need more strength. And the Eucharist is always here. The Eucharist is always present. Notice that Elijah received uh, this foreshadowing of the Eucharist before each thing, before the healing sleep and before receiving strength. It's the Eucharist. The Eucharist gives us that healing and that strength that we need. And of course, why? Well, we hear in our gospel. The bread of life that I give is my flesh for the life of the world. It's Jesus. And I know that we all need, that we all know that. But sit in that, that reality. Let it sink in and even deeper. Let it just sit. It's Jesus. It's Jesus who gives us that healing. It's Jesus who gives us that strength himself of his own healing of his own strength. Just imagine how awesome his healing is. He rose himself from the dead. That's some pretty good healing. He gave him enough strength to go without sleep for a whole night and to carry a huge heavy cross after being almost beaten to death. That's a lot of strength. That's just his human strength. Just imagine all of the healing and the strength that he wants to give us. It's Jesus. It's Jesus himself. For us Catholics, um, the source and summit of our faith is the Eucharist. I don't know if you've been reading those, um, those bulletin covers that Father Aaron Johannic has been writing, um, but I know that that was the topic of one of them, the Eucharist as being the source and summit of our faith. How it's based in the Eucharist. It's the center. It's not everything, but it's the center. And when we're rooted in the Eucharist, we're rooted in Jesus. Because the Eucharist is Jesus. So we don't need to fear idolatry. We don't need to fear anything. When we stay close to the Eucharist, we're staying close to Jesus. When we centralize ourselves around the Eucharist, we centralize ourselves around Jesus. So brothers and sisters, I, I offer this to you, again, either to deepen or maybe even to start, to have Jesus at the center. Have the Eucharist at the center, the very center. We bring to him everything. We bring to him our times, our needs for healing, our, our times, our need for strength, everything. We share our whole hearts with him, as Elijah did. And then we receive the strength, we receive the healing that we need. In whatever area we're in, whatever need we have, whether it's healing or strength or, or both, we offer that to the Lord, to the Lord, his sacred heart, which heals and gives us strength. I believe in one God, the 
Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And it's intimate God in my life. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and the apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the Lord's providence and love for us, let us turn to him with our petitions. For the leaders of the church, that they will faithfully pass on the teachings of Christ and his church, and so inspire greater faith among the Christian people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our elected leaders, that they may lead with wisdom and humility, and that they will protect the religious liberty and the rights of all human persons, especially the most vulnerable among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Christians throughout the world persecuted for their faith, that they may have the strength to endure hardship and suffering, and that the Lord will rescue them from harm. Let us pray to the Lord. For married couples and those preparing for marriage, that they may be strengthened in their relationships and grow in their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life in our diocese, that many will respond to God's call to devote their lives to him and the service of his church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are unemployed, that they may quickly find meaningful work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for good weather and for the safety of our farmers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have died, especially the deceased members of our parish family, may they rest in peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Good and gracious Father, please hear these our petitions and answer them if they be in accordance with your will, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 28, Blessed by Your Sacrifice, number 28.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy you have given them to be offered. By your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity May the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, mighty to the praise of your main manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and without and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with her servant Francis, our Pope, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cassagnus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted on among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, 
he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with the serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my group, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Such cold who can 
Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 38, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silenced, number 38.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we are consumed to save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father Matt and Father Aaron will be leading a pilgrimage for the year of St. Joseph to the National Shrine of St. Joseph and to the Shrine of Our Lady of Good Help, where Mary appeared in 1859. This would be a great way to visit these shrines and to receive special graces during the year of St. Joseph. Please see the bulletin for more details. Roxanne Felder, Felder, who is organizing this trip, will be available in the back of church after Mass to answer any questions you might have. A reminder that there will be no Masses this Tuesday in the AFC due to a priest gathering. We need more volunteers for Winstock on August 20 and 21. Please contact one of the chair people or check the bulletin for more information on how to sign up. Other, er other areas to help are on Friday, August 13 at 9 a.m. in the church social hall to stuff camper programs with trash bags and Monday, August 23rd at 8 a.m. to count vendor concession tickets in the Holy Trinity Industrial Arts Room. Please pray for all those in our area faith community who have passed away this week, including Elizabeth Howe of St. Pius and Virginia Condon of Holy Family. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And now let us say our prayer for a new bishop. Almighty God, who by the Holy Spirit moves the hearts of your people, direct the counsels of those who are appointed to choose a bishop for the Diocese of Nuam, that we may be given a pastor who in faithfulness and wisdom shall lead your people in the way of holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 37, Holy, 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 number 37.